Hello everyone and welcome to the Toxic Fungi 13 Duels, the first ever event in NASCAR Excel Energy Cup Series history. On pole is Patrick Smith. He will go down in the record books as being the first ever driver to win the pole for the US 500 and he'll lead him off here for Duel 1. To his outside is Julio Caesar in the number 4. Starting 3rd is Jacob Rose. Starting 4th is Noah Robb. 5th is Dylan Jacobs, 6th is TJ Hanley, 7th is Preston Emmons, 8th is Jay Jefferson, 9th is Trey Fisher, 10th is Teddy Carey, 12th is Dominic Carlone, 12th is Ryan Priest, 13th is Brady Burkhart, 14th is Yari Matsi Hapalainen, Starting 15th is Taylor Fry, 16th is Zachary Bilson, 17th is Logan Bradley, 18th is Nicholas Perez, 19th is Matthew Eves, and rounding up the field in 20th is Noah Breeze. Let's get the command. Start your engines. engines are fired here in Orlando. 17 laps of racing on the three-mile high-banked oval. There is a mandatory pit stop, and oh, no! Patrick Smith! Patrick Smith has not gotten going. He's had, an, he's had mechanical issues right before the start of the race. Oh, that's heartbreak, and that's really going to screw up the field here. As Patrick Smith trying to get off the line, his car will not move, and he will slowly crawl down to the apron and be towed back to the pits. But the pace car and the rest of the field aren't stopping. Well, like the rest of the field, Julio Caesar doing the right thing and waiting for the inside line to crawl back up. There it is. There. A lot of order here, so... Not the start the fans wanted to see for this inaugural race, but we'll just have to deal with it as... Not what we wanted, but Jacob Rose will now assume the inside line control car position, and he will lead them down as... Oh, man, these guys should get penalties for starting like this, but I guess they won't. There's the green flag, and we are racing in Tox Toxic Fungi 13 duels. This is duel number one. Climbing up to speed around the around the three mile oval banks. This is a unique oval because they go right instead of left. But Dylan Jacobs, he got off to the start that he needed. He is going to take the top spot from Jacob Rose as it's two Chevys on the bottom helping. That's Trey Fisher in the 32 right behind the six. And there you see it. Patrick Smith stopped on pit road. No hope for him to have a chance for a competitive run but this may be a blessing in disguise because he already has the pole and he won't get any equipment torn up as they come across the line for lap one it's going to be trey fisher from the dollar general camaro leading lap one We've got two toyotas coming up the inside that's brady burkhart and taylor fry they're running currently second and fourth as burkhart makes the big dive for the lead underneath 32 of trey fisher Berghart here. He's going to take the lead down the back straight away on lap number two. You can see a lot of this today, folks. Shuffling throughout the pack. There's Logan Bradley making it three wide. A lot of these drivers do like to run aggressive in this series, so I wouldn't be surprised if even... It'd be surprising... I contradict myself there. <laughs> but we could see four wide racing in this pack. It's definitely possible at this track. Many series before this have shown it, but in a small pack, it would be interesting to see if they'd be able to make it through. And I'm not sure who led that lap as Fry got underneath the zero, and it looks like the, the zero of Berghardt did lead it. Not by much, though, it looked like as they came across the line. They'll file. There's Teddy Kari way in the back <clears throat> trying to get something done on the outside, but. Will not happen. 
Fry is out leading, but looks like the 28 of Zachary Bilson is trying to get to his inside. They're going to go three wide for the lead here. And Orlando, the whole pack, three by three throughout. Fans are seeing some great racing tonight, but Bilson, the inside line is the place you want to be. He gets the shove to the lead. And Zachary Bilson is going to lead lap number three here of 17 in Orlando. Give you a quick onboard shot from Ryan Priest as he works the high banks and we'll show you how much he, the jostling that these guys have to do inside this pack. And there you saw coming up his inside was the number 18 of Noah Breeze. Those two cars, the 66 and 18, are teammates. Breeze Sport Unlimited, the team. But it's like we've got a little two-car breakaway here with Bilson and Nick Perez. The Kit Kat car. No, Perez is going to really turn left, hard left, driving it down to the yellow line. And he's going to get right underneath the 28. But broke away a little bit. This pack is going to eat them up soon. They come down the long back straightaway, three miles. It's a long, long way around. But what, fa what lap times are they running? They're running about 56 seconds, so under a minute. They're making good speed at about 100 mi 190 miles an hour, but these plates do slow them down significantly. I'd say without plates, they'd be going about 20, 25 miles an hour faster, but be able to see the close technical racing that these guys do and there's there's some four wide trey fisher way to the outside he's gonna get followed up and thrown to the back of the cycle but did patrick smith ever come out of the pit lane no smith is done he did the right thing and parked it zero one will not get any extra track time before the universal 500 that could cost him but that could save him a lot of money if these guys Tear each other up in a rack. The leading is the Hills Racing Kit Kat Mazda of Nick Perez. Zachary Bilson has had a really strong car today. He's been at the front of the field these last couple laps. Though it doesn't look like the cycle's really taking effect yet. But that's pretty much the luck of these super speedways. You gotta be at the cycle in the right time and stay out of the rack. And you're pretty much set for a good finish. So, looks like we've got a Mazda 1-2 here. That's TJ Hanley coming up. The inside of the 45. He's got help from the 2. Car alone. Leo Caesar, who started second on the outside there. Second place. He's, on, he's made his way to the inside, and he's rushing back up to the front of the field. But lap 7 of 17, they're going to be 10 to go next time by, which means pit stops are probably just a lap or two away. That's going to make or break some of these guys' starting positions. The Universal 500. Will you get a good pit stop? Will you not? And there's some early takers. I almost thought Burghardt and Kari and Fisher really drove it to the inside at the bottom of Three and four, but they did not pit. Really surprising. Those guys are might be organizing a little practice move. It's dangerous coming from 190 down to about 60 in the pit lane. There's four wide back there. Like Matthew Eves. Not taking four wide, maybe with half a line in. But looks like nothing will really come out of it. Taylor Fry running down low by himself. He's dropping to the back. That might be a good decision here. Pit stops, but Julio Caesar has been pushed to the race lead. He's gotten by Dominic Carlone. 
Will we see takers this time? A lot of them went down. And yes, we do. Preston Emmons, Trey Fisher, Jacob Rose, Logan Bradley, Taylor Fry, and Bradley really slowing up. Oh, that's why he had the first pit stall. Kind of weird that these pit stalls are really spread out throughout the field of 20, but my problem. Fisher in for his box. He's going to get tires. Probably don't need tires, honestly. Right now, Dylan Jacobs is in. And looks like Preston Emmons is looking good coming off of pit road. He's going to beat the 32 out. The 81 had a good stop. Up. Logan Bradley, he gained some positions, but back up at the front of the field. Looks like Caesar, who led last lap, he's leading Jay Hanley there. Second. And looks like Looks like a three-car pack is the only one staying out as they group up for pits. Caesar, Dominic Carlone, and Jay Jefferson. Those are your top three as coming into the pits are Perez, Burkhart, Priest, Kari, Palainen, Rob, uh, Matthew Eaves, and TJ Hanley who is out. Zachary Bilson, who is out. Let's see, will Bilson get the race off pit road? Kari's out. Out, looks like TJ Hanley, who led them into the pits, will get the lead out of the pits. Perez a little farther back. Berghart and Bilson, those guys are in hack distance, so those guys will have a little bit extra momentum here after pit road to get these off. But Emmons and Fisher are battling. Not too far behind them, or a little three-car tandem of Bradley, Jacobs, and Rose. And if I was Logan Bradley, I wouldn't be making those moves. See, diving under guys when you're trying to catch guys that are ahead of you on a plate track, it really helps if you're in a straight line, not in a big, giant bunch. Looks like these guys up to speed. Will they get by? Guys joining up the pack. Be ease, ease. Is he gonna hold anyone up? No, he stays down. He's gonna drop right in behind Rose, and should be able to catch the draft of those guys. But I don't know about those behind him. And no, Eves was really slow. I don't think he's gonna catch the draft of this little group of cars. But like out ahead of those are Bilson, Burkhart, Perez, and Hanley. Hanley have the lead. As Hanley's dropping to the inside, Perez had a big run on his outside. But Hanley is fourth. There are your leaders. The top three who pit Caesar, Jefferson, and Carl alone. But I don't think they're going to get there as they work one and two. Actually go to the visor cam of... Oh, wow, look at this. Jacob Rose and Teddy Kari are really battling out there. Pretty close down the back straightaway. 20 cars here all spread out. Who's going to get the win? We'll see. Let's go into the visor count of Zachary. Zachary Bilson here as he works the pack. Probably should have turned reflections off. That's why it was a little laggy there in the visor cam. But looks like Carr alone and Jefferson are going to be able. It's going to be a six-car battle for the lead unless the rest of the pack will catch up. What are the intervals currently as we see? Default ticker because I kind of forgot to download the regular one. But oh well. Looks like a 2.3 second gap back to Julio Caesar. But even farther back, Teddy Carey and Jacob Rose, that is three and a half seconds. Looks like it will only be a six-lap battle for the win here at Orlando. Nicholas Perez leads. TJ Hanley second. Zachary Bilson third. Battling for fourth side-by-side -side is Dominic Carlone and Jay Jefferson. And in sixth is Brady Burkhart. This is the race for third place starting position in the Universal 500 here in the Orlando Speed Weeks.
down the back straight away. There you see the rest of the pack. There, it looks like Julio, Julio Caesar did fall into them and will be able to hold their draft. But Teddy Kari is... Last time we checked on that pack, he was leading, but looks like he is really pulling that pack around this place. Three wide, Eve, Caesar, and Fisher, and then Hepalinen in the Viagra 27 is there on the inside. And 27 is actually a painted throwback to White Bliss's 2000 Pontiac in the NASCAR. Monster Energy Series, whatever they call it now. Winston Cup Series back then, you know. Anyways, we only have three to go next time. by. Let's, let's check back in on our leaders. And Perez holds it. Nick Perez in the 45 is holding it. Bilson and Carlone are there for second. Two Mazdas Two Fords and two Toyotas. No Dodges. No Chevys. Are there any Dodges in this duel? I don't know. No, actually, this is a Mopar free duel, as you saw there. Taylor Fry and Noah Breeze. They are really going to have some bad starting spots for this in the back. They really lost the draft after those pit stops. Must have been bad strategy for them. Anyways, it is three to go. Nick Perez leads. Will Carlone and Burkhardt have anything for him on the inside this time by? Jefferson trying to get around Hanley on the Hanley on the outside. I don't think that's going to work, Jay. You don't have any cars pushing behind you, but Perez doing an excellent job of keeping in front of these leaders. The Fords just don't have the power to get around him. Miss Jefferson still trying to work the high line, but there's really no rubber there. He's going to drop back inside. Smart move. Don't want to lose this draft. Here they come. Two laps to go. The 45. Will he be able to hold on? We'll see. Here at Orlando, the crowd is getting ready to be on their feet. They want to see an exciting finish. Will we get it? Will they stay in line? They're, they're tandeming out. They're freight training. There goes Burkhart to the outside. Will he have any help? There goes Carlone to the inside. Will Dominic Carlone have anything for Nick Perez? Down the back straight away they come. No one is on the inside of Carlone. Hanley pushing Burkhart up to push the 45. Jefferson drops down to help Carlone. But Jefferson could be hurting his teammate Burkhart. Yes, the 0 and 38 are teammates. Well, the 45, Hills Racing, Nick Perez have anything. The white flag is coming out. The white flag, sponsored by Bush's Baked Beans, is out. Burkhart 2 is inside. Will Brady Burkhart have anything for the 45? The lead is side by side here on the final lap. Into turn 1 and 2 for the final time. Carlone, he goes to the inside to help with Burkhart. Perez is going to get help from his Mazda teammate. Who is Mazda manufacturer teammate of Hanley. Jefferson goes to the inside. He's going to help his teammate Burkhart. Bilson doesn't know where to go. Down the back straight away. It's Burkhart and Perez duking it out for the lead. Brady Burkhart to the inside. He's got the inside line. That's where the advantage is. The 45 falls back. Through the banks. Off of four. The zero goes high. Will the two be able to get under him? No. Brady Burkhart is going to win duel number one at Orlando. On the last lap, they gained up on the 45 of Nick Perez. And Brady Burkhart will win duel number one and start third at the Universal 500. Second goes to Dominic Carlone. Third, Nick Perez. Looks like fourth, Jay Jefferson. Fifth, TJ Hanley. And sixth, excuse me, Zachary Bilson. And let's see the rest of these results out of this pack. Logan Bradley and Preston Emmons, seventh and eighth. 
Yari Mati Hapalainen in ninth, Trey Fisher 10th, Matthew Eaves 11th, and Teddy Kari, who was leading that pack for a while, falls down to 12th. Ryan Priest, Noah Robb, Julio Caesar, who started in the second position, falls to 15th. He's the biggest loser of the day. Dylan Jacobs, an unsuccessful result. Jacob Rose, who started, he started up there too. 14th through 17th started from about 2nd to 6th, I believe, or somewhere around there, and they all ended off this race poor, but a very good duel. As there you see, Noah Breeze really fell off. Oh, man. But a successful duel. Brady Burkhart will start 3rd. He had some drama at the start, but it ended up being a clean race, and no one will have to change out any parts except for Patrick Smith will still start on the pole. See you at Duel 2. Welcome to Duel number 2. The Toxic Fungi 13 Duel so sets the qualifying order for the Universal 500, first ever race of the NASCAR XL Energy Cup Series. On pole is the 46th of of Dane Cruz is Coca-Cola Win Dixie Dodge. For no dodges in duel number one. Let's see what they can do in this duel. Oh, wrong one. Starting second is Skylar Dixon in the 12. Third is Eric Darnell. Fourth is Dragos King. Fifth is Matthew Towns. Sixth is Antoine Smith. Seventh is James Busher. Eighth is Brandon Morris. Ninth is Kev Shear. Tenth is Nick Bergwald. Eleventh is Danica Matthew. Twelfth is Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Thirteenth is Logan Cloud. Fourteenth is Tib Foster. Fifteenth is Gabrielle Duran, the only female in the field. Sixteenth is Cody Wortley. Seventeenth is... Uh, yeah, seventeenth is Austin Delgado. 18th is Hector Caranas. 19th is Austin Terrio. And rounding out your field in 20th is Robbie Webb. So, anyways, we've got, got 17 laps of racing here. Get the command. Drivers, start your engines. Just like last duel, we will have 17 laps and the mandatory pit stop in the middle of it. And looks like the whole field was getting rolling this time after Patrick Smith had his little incident in the first duel. But Dane Cruz will lead them down. The Ohio driver is looking for success in this series, he said. Tyler Dixon from Alabama on the outside. His race is close to his home, so he wants to, he's got his family down here. He wants to impress. Our visor cam driver for this duel will be the 14 of Eric Darnell. Pace car will be peeling off here. Large crowd, large Orlando fan base for the NXECS. They're out to support these guys for the duels and the Universal 500. There's the green. Let's listen to these guys get up to speed. Oh, earlier aggression in this duel than last. They go three wide much earlier. Matthew Town, James Busher way down to the yellow line. He's looking really racy today. He wants that fourth place starting spot. For Dane Cruz, not even a crash would take him out of his second place. Only out of some money in the bank, so he's got nothing to race for. He just wants to get... His talent expressed and show these fans what he can do and make some new ones. Logan Cloud almost onto the yellow line there off the corner. You're on the inside line, you kind of get really wiggly on the bottom lane there. That's really going to catch 
that might catch some some of these guys out. Like Cloud and Delgado, they're trying to work together to get through this field on the inside. Inside line's the quickest way, but it's better to slide up off the corners and be on the outside, especially on the back straightaway. But it looks like Cruz will have this lead solidly here on lap number two. Town and Dixon side by side for second. Aim for fourth between Darnell and Busher. Let's give you that visor cam. Really bad off the of four, I apologize. He's making a move now, way to the outside is Town. Town's going for the lead as it's a dodge one, two. Now you can see up more in the gray, you have to work the wheel a little bit more. Watch and be careful over these bumps. Delgado with a big shove to the back of Busher. Those are two Camaros working together. Crawl down the back straight away in 190 miles an hour. It doesn't look like they're going fast, but remember, this is a massive track. Built over some old swamplands outside Orlando. And they're going four wide, almost five wide. There, Zachary Fitzwater looking really racy on the bottom. And Robbie Webb, he's going last, uh, nearly first. He's really worked his way through the pack. Did he get third at the line? He did. He's gone from last to third in only four laps. Robbie Webb. At this, the cycle is really paying off for him. You know, it's if it's just the cycle or just his speed. Does that 20 car have the momentum to get good position in the Universal 500? Maybe even win this duel. Austin Delgado, he was the leader at the line. He's looking strong. He's from California. We got two races in California this season. Ontario and the season finale, the Yamaha California 500. He'd love to impress for those home crowds. And hopefully he will. All I can say, the drivers really, really means a lot to them doing their do well in their home race and I know that's not the, no that is the same for Austin Zachary Fitzwater senior is leading the only Australian in the field they go four wide for third look out way Zachary Fitzwater loves racing nothing stopping him he'll race in any he races anything in any continent that's why he's over here in the States Pressing in his Foster's Wilson security dodge as Kev Shearer dives underneath the 59. The Slim Jim number 80 is going to get the lead. Hand it over to Kev Shearer as we have Hector Carneris. The 42. Shearer might not lead this lap. Can Carneris get under him? No. Three wide. Incredible racing in this duel. They're really, really fanning out. And the fans are loving it. They are getting their money's worth tonight. And Shearer. I'm going to cut down the track and block the 42. Ooh, it's going to be close. No. Tried a really, really casual block and it didn't pay off. And Carneris is going to get underneath him for this lead. Fly by down the back straight away here. Down, rushing down. Delgado looked really high there. Couldn't do anything as Busher is last in the draft. Brandon Morris has worked his way up in front. This is a throwback to his favorite driver, Mark Martin. That's his 1994 paint scheme. And Dragos King. Really threw it down there. He's going to work with the other dodge dart of Antoine Smith. And another one. The King's teammate is behind Smith. Dane Cruz. He starts second. He showed the speed in qualifying. And he's showing it in the duel. But looks like King is going to get past Morris here. As they come down the back. 
the five Labats dodge. And Sib Foster there, stuck in the middle. He's got the Dodge Factory sponsorship. Not unsponsored. I've had a lot of fans think that, but no, they're not. But look at this. Lap 8. Lap 7, lap 8. They snuck right up on us. The Dodges, Busher, and Webb are in. Oh, man. Busher really checked up to get in his box. And Webb absolutely ran him. Whoa. Busher had to slide in and he hit the wall. So the 31 is going to have some damage here. That is really going to hurt that team. And Smith. Did Smith take fuel only? Wonder if Smith took fuel only. That would be very interesting if that's the case. To beat King out. No, he won't beat King out, but Smith is really going to pay off from that stop. He's back up in the pack. The pack has separated here. Top three. Looks like Morris is going to stay out. Bergwald gets in the car. Carreras coming into the pits. Really unhappy with what the 42 is driving. Get, give him a little tap or two coming down. Oh boy, that could be an interesting situation after this race. Service, service, service. As it looks like Cody Wortley, Tyler Dixon, Matthew Town, Austin Terrio, and Brandon Morris are these only guys to stay out, but unfortunately I feel that Morris, because he's out by himself and has no help in the draft, he's really going to pay as these guys who did the undercut are going to have drafting help. Remember King Smith and those guys, they really had a large pack coming into the pits. That could really help them get up to speed quicker. And maybe even take the lead. Dixon is Terrio staying out. I don't know if Terrio is going to have enough fuel. They short fill these cars for the mandatory stop. And short fill mainly because everybody just doesn't come in on the same lap. Some actual strategy into this. I don't know if Austin Terrio will have enough fuel. As there you see the damage to James Busher car. Might affect him but... He's going to get in the draft with these guys in the back. Hopefully Fitzwater doesn't lose the draft here. As coming down the back is Austin Terrio. Let's give you an onboard shot to feel what it looks like to be alone out here. No drafting friends here at Orlando. He's going to roll the car down to the inside and pull it into the pits. Frames are just unbearable off of four. I I apologize. There is Morris coming out of the pits. And he's going to get jumped by these guys. Delgado, Carreras, Antoine Smith, Dragos King, and Bergwald. Well, I've heard a lot of talk in the garage that this eight car is one of the fan favorite schemes this year. And I'm... Um, not gonna agree. I'm not gonna agree or disagree, but a lot of work put onto that. That was actually made by the driver Nick Bergwald. I many couple of these drivers made schemes for me, as obviously they like to help out. So I'm pretty thankful for them. You know, great to see that this NR2003 community is still strong, but. There's Terrio coming out. He's going to lose a lot of time there. Going to be about six. About six to go. I don't know if it's six. I always forget. This but looks like King is going to dive underneath the 39. For the race lead. No. He's got no help. Bergwald sucks up to the back of his Urban Stewart Motorsports teammate. And the 39 will pull down on 35. Bergwald have anything for him on the outside? Will the 35 be able to hold it on the grippier inside? Looks like him. But looks like the 35 is going to lose it. And it's going to be an Urban Stort 1-2. Chevrolet 1-2. 
look outside this. It's another six car pack for the lead. It was like that in duel number one. It's going to be that for duel two. There's Matthew Town. James Busher, even with damage, is able to hold it in this pack. That shows you what a good car is like. Gabrielle Duran, the only female in the field. He's holding it in the top ten. i got to give her credit. And then the John Rollison racing teammates of Wortley and... Dixon, they're going to go four wide here in the corner. Look out. Dane Cruz making aggressive moves that he really doesn't need to. Oh, I'm worried for the worried for the actual race if he's racing like that now, making four wide, even though he's locked into a second place starting position. I guess he just wants to screw over other drivers, I guess. But the Dairy Queen boys are coming up. Terrio and Darnell. Arnell's your visor cam. Why don't we go on the visor cam and show you what it's like here in the pack as he works the inside. Let's see with the plates how they hit the rev limiter there. And there's a shot out of the side, seeing the damage on Busher's car after he hit the pit wall. Thankfully, um, it, um, unfortunately hit one of his guys, but they've been released from the infield care center. His pit crew member is A-OK. -okay. Good sign as this pack works. But there's only four to go for this lead pack, as Kev Shearer has taken the lead. Kev Shear in the Slim Jim 80, the only Toyota in this front group, has taken the point. It's going to be the Dodges and the Chevys working together, and I expect the 42 and the 80, the Japanese manufacturers, to try and help each other out. But it's going to be really interesting. Will the 80 be in a situation like Nick Perez was, who just led and led and led, and then on the last lap got absolutely jumped by the field, and ooh, too late on the block. Here comes Antoine Smith in the 65 to the inside. The, Le the Le Labatt Blue Dodge. He's going to take the lead as they come down. Ooh, maybe not. It's going to be close here at the line. Oh, man. What was the margin there? One one hundredth. Was it any closer? No. 15 one thousandths of a second at the line. It'd be incredible if we got a finish like that, but there's only three laps to go. It's go time. Make your friends in this front group now because you're going to have to have someone to push you to victory. Like the Urban Stort guys aren't working together. There's no teammates in the final three laps for them. It's Bergwald. It's going to look low on the 39. Would be strategy. No. Delgado holds the middle line. That strategy will not work out, but there's still a lot of time. This is a three-mile course, remember. But, oh, what's this? No, what's this? Shear's coming in the pit again. Oh, no, they didn't get enough fuel. What? They didn't get enough fuel? This should not be happening. They should have had enough fuel. Foster Fitzwater, no, no. Why don't they why didn't they put enough fuel in? I don't get it. Everyone's going to be screwed now. Oh my goodness. Strategy has backfired for a lot of these guys including race leader Kev Shear. But uh, there's a lot of good racing here, but our main focus is the lead. But oh man, it's only a 3 car fight now. But will these guys have to come in? It's the white flag next time. Delgado and Carreras. Bergwald's a little far back and they're coming in. Oh my goodness. They're coming in. What is this? Could not be happening. Terrio's going to stretch it. Looks like this could be the race for third. Terrio, Morris, Cruz, Town, Wortley, and Dixon. These guys are going to stretch it. Let's see if they will be able to. Give you an onboard look with Matthew Town here. This is the final lap. This is going to be the race for victory. Brandon Morris, YouTube channel there, being promoted on the back of his car. Go give him the sub. 
Anyways, it's the final lap here at Orlando. Morris, the 55, diving underneath the other Toyota of Terrio. Who's going to get this? Will they pit? Will they pit like idiots? This game is broken sometimes, but it doesn't look like this. Brandon Morris with the shove from Dane Cruz. Cruz to the inside. No, he's pitting. Brandon Morris coming down. It's going to be side by side. A photo finish. Who's going to get it? Oh, man. Wow. Unbelievable. That was really close at the line, but I think Brandon Morris got it. Six one thousandths of a second. Oh, my goodness. Ho, ho, ho. These were some exciting duels. Wow, Dane Cruz is retired. That's a... That's interesting, but... Brandon Morris takes the win. He starts third. Austin Terrio, the, the extreme overcut paid off for him. Terrio's Dairy Queen Toyota, excuse me. Oh, wow. That was something. Thank you for watching. Thank you for signing up. I I appreciate it, but the rest of the field there, they were about 30 seconds back, but the fans still were able to see a good finish, even though the strategy didn't pay off for a lot of these guys. Robbie Webb, oh, qualified last. He's starting last. Oh, that's heartbreak for that John Rolston racing team. Anyways, your results, you've seen on the screen for about a minute now. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the Universal 500.